you're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Carr. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Speed here on this Friday the 13th. Coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Great program lined up today. The voice, Gus Johnson. Joining us in the next segment, but right now we've got our one of our favorites, Tom Brew from Sports Illustrated Indiana, out brewing up some coffee. I understand. How's it going, man? I'm doing well. I'm coffee. It's been a busy morning, so it's uh, coffee cup number three at the moment. So. Yeah, I could use another cup. I, I've only had the one, but I've been kind of tethered to the uh, to the desk here. But uh, a lot coming up this week, and obviously a big, big game for Indiana football. A little bit of a blow with the the, lo- the potential loss of Michael Penning. Should say potential because nothing's been confirmed. But it, it's not exactly like uh, this is uh, Indiana losing Allen Henderson during the during that run. Peyton Ramsey's a guy that's played a ton. Had his best game as a, in his career against the Ohio State Buckeyes, and he's got that leadership quality that's already there for him. So it's uh, it's not like it's all all hope is lost. Well, no, it's it's not. But but I have to tell you, Jim, it just um, you know the way it looks. You know, Michael Penix is hurt and he's not going to play Saturday. And you know, I have been since. I launched my website on August 1st. I have been looking forward to Michael Penix Jr. taking on the Ohio State Buckeyes. And six weeks later, here we are, and it's not going to happen. And it just just it just disappoints me just huge. I mean, not only as as a fan of college football who wanted to see what this kid could do against the number six ranked team in the country. But just as a storyteller, too, it's just like, you know, you wanted something great to happen in a game like this. And certainly, you know, Peyton Ramsey can play and, and, and all that. But And we talked about that all throughout fall camp with this quarterback, you know, debate as to who should be the starter. And, and everybody was in agreement all along that just Mike, you know, Michael Penix with his big arm and throwing deep and being able to run, that he was just the more dynamic player. And now it looks like he's not going to play. So it's... It just it's just really really disappointing to me if it's if it's going to come out that way and and uh, based on what I could tell today it looks to me like uh, he's not going to play it looks to me like it's Peyton Ramsey and uh, you know game time decision is what uh, they're still saying but uh, you know when you haven't practiced all week and you haven't been able to throw all week and uh, you know you're not going to just throw a guy in there so I'm um, I'm assuming it's gonna, Peyton's going to be the one and we'll just have to take it from there. Yeah, I reposted a, a video clip from uh, our friends at Fox 41 in Louisville, WDRB TV. Uh, Aaron Matus, who does the great coverage of, of in, in Indiana football, is more than any other TV station. But uh, they, they posted a clip after his pa- touchdown pass to, uh, I think it was Peyton Hendershot, you can see he he shakes with his right hand, which that could be completely normal for him, even though he's left-handed. But when he's walking off, you you can tell the right hand, the right arm is just freer than the left. So something happened. Uh, I don't know if it was on that play. Something popped when he threw. It was a short throw, so it wasn't a long throw either. But there was it was visible that he wasn't quite the same, and I don't think he played again after that. He did not, and uh, and I I have watched that video again this morning myself. And uh, and you're exactly right. I mean that TV station there, you know, there, there's not a TV station anywhere that, that spends more time with Indiana football than they do. And the clip is great. You can really see his left arm just something not right with it. You know, and to me, you know, I've I've experienced uh, uh, guys uh, around some shoulder injuries in the past, and to me, that's what it looks like that that maybe he's probably done something to that shoulder. Now, I also though went back and watched. Uh, like the, that drive, you know, on, on the replay of the game and I never see him get hit, you know? So it's not like, uh, he got hit and got hurt. You know, I'm so, I'm, you know, if I had, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a doctor and I have never played one on TV, but I think just from watching it, if I had to guess, he's probably strained that shoulder somehow, some way. And if that's, you know, if that's what they mean by it's probably a short term thing and where maybe it just needs some rest and rehab, you know, that's fine, but that's usually, you know, a couple weeks thing. It's not usually a couple of days thing. So uh, we'll have to see how it all plays out. But, you know, like, like I said earlier, man, it just, I'm just really disappointed. 
Oh, yeah, we all are. I mean, we're all looking forward to that. And, and not just that, though, just the potential of of uh, doing something that they haven't done in a very, very long time, beating Ohio State. And to do it at home would make it all the more special. But with UConn coming in the following week, I doubt that we see him for the next two weeks because they're not going to need him against UConn. No, I agree. And, uh, you yeah, know, but, you know, it would have been nice to have him out there on Saturday because, uh, you know, the, the, I had a great time. Uh, the, the story I wrote this morning uh, was all about, you know, those the last time Indiana beat Ohio State, you know, back in 1988. You know, it's been, you know, it's been, you know, 31 years, you know, and 24 losses, uh, you know, since the last time they beat Ohio State. And certainly if Michael had played, there was obviously no guarantee that, uh, and Indiana would have won Saturday, but I think I would have liked their chances a little bit. But, you know, to go back and revisit that time was great. And because uh, it's going to be an electric atmosphere there. It's, uh, you know, even though it's a noon game, it's early. You know, I think the crowd was still going to be totally into it. And, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. You know, it's, um, you know, there's, this is still a very good team that we like to, to think is, you know, going to have a good season. So, uh, and they, and they like, and they like trust Peyton. I mean, it's the one story that I can best tell about that was even after Michael was named the starter and he had played game one, I talked to Wap Fillier, the wide receiver, you know, for Indiana. And he's like, man, all camp, and we were all, we were watching all camp too, and all three of them were good, and Peyton was really good, and he's my guy too. And it's like, you know, so like th- this team uh, will absolutely rally around Peyton Ramsey on Saturday, and they will play no different, you know, than than what they would have with Michael out there. You know, they have that much confidence in Peyton Ramsey to do well. No, and something that has helped is is the fact of th- this offense under Kalen DeBoer. Uh, I've likened it to like a machine gun. It just sprays the ball all over the place, and so that's uh, that helps. I think helps uh, Peyton Ramsey out. It's a little more conducive to his type of game. But the, the biggest thing to me is the defense is going to have to stand up. Indiana has been outscored by Ohio State in the last five years, seventy to seventeen in the fourth quarter. So the deep, this defense is a young line, but they're going to have to step up and uh, have some timely stops and maybe a, a timely turnover. Right, and I agree. But the uh, but I but I think that where we will see a difference this year with Indiana's defense compared to some of these other years is their depth is so much better. You know, especially uh, especially in that front seven. You know, they 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 feel like they can really rotate defensive linemen now without having a drop off. They absolutely can rotate linebackers without having any drop off at all, you know, and, and I think that will make a difference because when you go back and watch, uh, these last five years, now granted, Ohio State's had some tremendous running backs in the last five years, you know, between Ezekiel Elliott and Mike Weber and DK and, and, and Dobbins, you know, they've got some great big, huge backs, but that big offensive line just wore Indiana out. And by the fourth quarter, Indiana's defense was gassed, you know, and it's like, you know, and yeah, they gave up some points, but let's, let's also not forget that in the last five years, Indiana's offense has failed to really put up any points in the fourth quarter either. So, I um, mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a full team thing, but you know, this Indiana team is better. So we'll see. And, uh, you know, they've hung with Ohio State for two and three quarters a lot of times. And, you know, they, you know, they've been preaching that, you know, Tom Allen said that yesterday, you know, that from the spring and through summer workouts and through fall camp, they've talked about finishing and being a team that finishes in the fourth quarter. Well, this is, you know, they, uh, you know, they, you know, Ball State made them finish in the fourth quarter and they did, you know, and last week, of course, didn't matter, but here, you know, here they are, you know, like, that to me is the biggest question of the day, along with, you know, can Peyton Ramsey play well enough to win? But, you know, can this Indiana team play for 60 minutes with Ohio State? Absolutely. And I, and I know that Tom Allen is not looking at this game any differently. He, he's just going along and just, it's just plugging another guy in. He's got a lot of confidence in Peyton Ramsey. And Peyton Ramsey's an Ohio kid, as he pointed out in the press conference. He had his best game against Ohio State. So uh, it's – Things can happen. They're just they're just gonna have to do some different things. But that defensive line, like I said, is gonna be key to that. But they've got to score. You're right. Uh, in the fourth quarter, they they've averaged only scoring three points in this fourth quarter over the last five years, and it's that's something that they can't happen if they have want to have any shot at winning this game. Right. Well, and I and I have to admit, you know, here's a here's a little bit of uh, you know backroom journalism stuff. I was uh, well prepared to write. Uh, for my Friday afternoon column today that I was going to pick the upset, you know, and, uh, you know, and I had four, uh, four valid points as to how it was going to happen. 
you know, and now with Michael not playing, I've, I've decided not to do that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just, but I, but I, you know, I think, you know, the points that I was going to make, you know, from that, well, was, you know, you know, that Michael, you know, Penix, you know, throws such a great deep ball that Indiana had to hit a, has to hit a few big plays against Ohio state. And I think that's the one area where, uh, where it does make a huge difference in having uh, Peyton Ramsey in the game instead of Michael Penix is, is that deep ball and that long ball. And, you know, we've seen that already, uh, you know, we've had, they should have had three deep ball touchdowns already. And they've just had the one cause they had two horrible drops, you know, one each of the last two weeks with guys who were wide open. You know, I don't think that part of the game is necessarily Peyton's strength, but that was part of it. And the other things that I think matter is like you know, Indiana has to win special teams for sure. They've got to, uh, certainly preferably score some points in that area, either with a kickoff return or a punt return. But they definitely have to keep the field flipped, you know, and that's, you know, one area where Indiana, I think, does have an advantage in this game is with the kicking game and the punting game. And I think it has, you know, and it hit a big return and that makes a difference, you know, and, you know, that combined with a just, you know, this has always been a good turnover prone team. You know, they're they're uh, uh, best in the country, 19 game streak with a turnover ended last week. But, you know, if they could force a young quarterback playing his first road game into making a mistake or two, you know, that can make a difference. Yeah, I was talking about it earlier. I was watching, I was working all day and all night yesterday. And so I got to see that Michigan game yesterday a couple of times when they played Army last week. Turnovers nearly derailed Michigan in that game at home. And that's if Indiana can get some turnovers, that's something that Tom Allen has taken a great deal of pride in. They had that streak of 19 straight games with a takeaway that ended last week because they dominated Eastern Illinois so much they didn't really have the opportunity. But that's something that they've really worked on, and that is that's something that could be huge in a game like this. Absolutely. And uh, because well, let's not forget, you know, that Justin Fields, the Ohio State quarterback, you know, he was, he was, you know, he was a five star recruit, yes. But when he was at Georgia last year, he didn't beat out Jake Fromm. And the only action he ever got was in blowout with victories at home, you know. And uh, this is his first start on the road. And, you know, we've both watched enough football to know that that's different. You know, when you get out of that comfort level and you get out of that environment and, you know, you start to hear some noise and you start to see some pressure that young quarterbacks act differently on the road than they do at home. You know, it's like to me and Kane Womack, Indiana's defensive coordinator. And that's the first thing he said Monday that every chance we get, we're going to hit them. You know, and it's like, they're going to make him feel uncomfortable. And if they do, and they could force a couple early turnovers and get a lead, you know, who knows? I mean, it's, it just you know, flips the script completely. Now going c- kind of crazy. What happens at the all chance that, Pate Ramsey leads Indiana to a win in this game. Are we going to have a quarterback controversy? Well, I mean, if if he does it and he plays that well, then let let the controversy begin. Because the most <laughs> important thing is, you know, beating Ohio State on Saturday. And if Peyton Ramsey does that, then then maybe he does, you know, stay there. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, you know, but. Tom Allen has always been, and it's not just with the quarterback, it's, it's, it's with all 24 positions, the best guy plays, you know, and it's no matter what best guy plays. So, I mean, it could very, he could very easily, I mean, say he bull, pulls off the upset today and looks great and beating UConn next week and two weeks from now against Michigan State, you know, and, and Michael's healthy, you know, you got a decision to make there. But, you know, the same token, you know, is, is, is Peyton Ramsey at a hundred percent better than Michael Penix at 80, you know, that's going to be the determination, you know, and it's like, and that's the joy of having a backup quarterback with experience. You know, you don't have to force the issue. So, uh, but you know, we've, you know, we've seen Peyton play, you know, it's like Peyton Ramsey is not a first team all American quarterback. You know, we've learned that from last year, but, uh, but like we've talked about and a lot of people have talked about, We've never seen Peyton Ramsey in Kalen DeBoer's offense, you know, so we, you know, the first taste we got of it last week when he got to play two quarters was his 13 of 14 passing for 226 yards and a half, you know, so that's, you know, pretty darn impressive, you know, so it's, and granted it's Eastern Illinois, but he made every read correct. He made every throw correct. And, you know, 13 of 14 passing for 93% is impressive as hell. So, yes. um, so we'll have to see how he does, you know, and if he does, you know, Hey, it's, you know, if Peyton Ramsey plays great, then fine, leave him in there. Absolutely. Tom, what do the folks need to look for? I know you got a new piece up. 
Yeah, well, like I said I went I went back and we, you know talked to the great Don Fisher and we talked to Derek Jackson, the old Indiana quarterback, about those eighty seven, eighty eight years uh, when Indiana you know kind of dominated that stuff. And there's some great Woody Hayes stories in there, there's some great Bill Mallory stories in there. You know, and that can you can find that uh, at uh, mavensports.io slash Indiana for now. It's going to be si.com Indiana as soon as we get the lawyers done. Uh, but it's there and find it. It's on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter, TomBruceSports.com and and, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, we're busy and, uh, we've been busy today too, because thankfully my company, uh, uh, with, uh, Maven, we've also launched, uh, our Purdue site this morning. So, uh, so for the Purdue fans, you know, we got it, we're going to take care of them too. I, I've hired a writer to take care of that one. I'll take care of Indiana. He's going to take care of Purdue, but it's great to add to my company, you know, uh, the second site and be able to do a lot more with advertising and hiring some, some more people. And, uh, so it's all been good. So. But a busy right, morning. Uh, we're excited for Indiana Ohio State tomorrow. So. Sounds good. Uh, we'll see you at game tomorrow at noon. Uh, kickoff in Indiana. Good go Hoosiers. Here we go. Uh, coming up next, Gus Johnson's going to join us here on Indiana Sports Beat from Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Back with more right after this. Hey, thanks for listening to the rebroadcast from today's edition of Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle, the only daily show dedicated to Indiana University athletics. You can catch us live each weekday on indianasportsbeat.com, thedailyhoosier.com, gruelingtruth.com, or go to spreaker.com for live notifications. Yeah, that's speaker with an R, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. You can also catch the entire show any place you listen to a podcast, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, etc. You can find and follow the show on Facebook or follow me on Twitter at Jim Coyle ISB for complete coverage of the Indiana Hoosiers. Thanks again. I hope you have a great day. I'm Jim Coyle and I will see you on the radio.